Yes, yes. Uh, well, red alert here on Balloon Party. I've got the hiccups, so I am going to yield the floor to the gentleman from Ladue. This is Jackson Burkett's Balloon Party. You can just watch me on YouTube. I can't talk. Uh, I'm glad this moment has come. I feel bad that you're dealing with these hiccups, uh, but it's... it's, it's this a- is your time. You are Kurt Warner. I am Trent Green. This is your time. It is, Tim, and uh, I think it's high time we start talking about can the Denver Nuggets do it again. I, I can't help it, folks. I've got the hiccups. And, I mean, you look. At, well, we'll get to the tournament. We'll get to the, to the Redbirds, but I really want to talk about the work that Nikola Jokic is doing. Just another triple-double last You're going to have to uh, talk with Jeremy Rutherford at 1045. Do you want me to, like, text you questions? Uh, I just talk sweaters for a while. The Sharks, we're going to get rid of that clip art BS that they've been rocking with for that long. 30 plus years. Yeah, it's just because it's old doesn't mean it's good. That's what I'll say. Think about that. Yeah. Think about that. Uh, 59 people are in Balloon Party uh, YouTube chat waiting for us to see if my uh, hiccups will go away. I don't know if it'll, I don't know if it'll happen. Uh, you can text in the Air Comfort Service text line 314 399 There is so much to get to. I don't even know how we're going to try to fit it in to one hour of broadcast excellence, but I know Jackson's going to do his best. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the Little Piddles. What are you calling this? Uh, Well, it was originally the weekend wrap-up, as it's always been, but Ken Iggy Strode, who uh, works on TMA-STL with us, uh, offered up the name Monday Moaning. Monday Moaning. It's got alliteration, and it kind of sums up the weekend that was in St. Louis sports. Yeah, very fun. So I, I went with that. I went with that Monday too. morning brought to you by Little Piddles. The Cardinals fall last night after giving up the lead in the eighth and losing, dropping three of four on the opening series, but we're damn close to splitting in Southern California. How do you feel about the say of the Cardinals oh four my games God. in? What you really are a rights holder. What? Like that's your takeaway that they were close to splitting. Yeah, I mean they were well, they were close to getting swept too. I mean if we're gonna if we're gonna yeah, if we're gonna play game of inches. Game of inches. <laughs> Well, I mean, if if you if God, they you know I've got the hiccups. I can't defend myself. I'm a vulnerable animal over here, well, and you've decided to use your hand on me. Well, I'm not over here like super fired up, but what you saw you saw three, uh, two good pitching, starting pitching performances. Look at you! I'm just saying, like it's not like Bailey's Burkett, They call him. The sky is not falling because they lost three games to the best team in baseball. That's I think a lot of people are. I'm, I, that wasn't the take. Don't you straw man me? All right. Don't you straw man me? I'm just saying I don't think people leave that series going. You know they almost they almost split. I, that's how I that's how I took because it because you're a rights holder. No, no, you're holding rights. No. What are you going to be doing? I, what, what are you angling for? What job are you angling for? They were objectively close to splitting the series. Would you agree that they were objectively close to getting swept? Yes. Okay. But the the lines. <laughs> but yeah. But that's that's sports. I understand, but if you're going to say they were close to splitting, you also have to acknowledge they're close to getting swept. I mean, the one win did come in extra innings. No doubt. No okay. doubt. No doubt. But Gosh, I wonder what you're doing. I, I just I I feel like there's a lot. I wonder of, if Brad Thompson's on alert about you. God, you're gonna be you're gonna be going to do the Blues analyst now and the Cardinals analyst. No. Wow. Listen, I'm just saying there are some. I, I, well, I, now, now you have me like uh, like I'm uh, like defending the Cardinals. I'm just saying that it's. Well, I mean, I just I just didn't walk away from that, and I don't know how many people listening go. Yeah, you know, they almost split. Well, if they didn't, then they're they're pessimists, and I you know. But what? they also almost got swept. Yes, no doubt, no doubt. But at the end of the season, we're not like tallying up the games. Like, well, they almost lost. That well, one. you're the one who did it. I didn't bring it up. I'm I just, just I just feel an obligation to call attention to the fact that you're holding rights. I'm not. I, I have this no. This isn't Monday morning. This is holding rights. I have no. Welcome right. to holding rights on 101 ESPN. I have no rights to hold. I, was I know I, you don't, but you're clearly angling for a gig. You want Edmonds' spot? You you sat here, you wore a helmet while Jim Edmonds was in here. Maybe that's so you could disguise yourself while you were trying to take his yeah. gig. There's nothing more I want to do than work for ballets and diamond sports. <laughs> Sign me up. Uh, no, I I'm just saying that uh, they 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 had a a good effort on Saturday, like a legit good effort. Like there was even though yes, they were gifted some runs without I don't know what's the going dots, on anymore. They were certainly gifted runs, but there were also some moments where you're like, okay. Let's get let's get down to business here. I'm saying if they would have won last night, I would have walked away from that series very encouraged. Had they won last night, I would have walked away very encouraged. 
I, I agree with that. Because they're getting the offense, and Nolan Arenado has no clue what he's doing at the plate, and they're still getting some runs on the board. Even though, again, they're not they're really gifted. getting offense. They're gifted, the couple. Dude. I love you. So I hate to do this. You know what I feel like right now? I feel like Wesley Snipe at the end of New Jack City. Mm-hmm. Wasn't that when Best Picture in 91? It was, it was robbed. <laughs> Thank you. Good or bad? Good. Thank well, God. Boy, that, been, that, been, that might have been the end of Balloon Party. New Jack City. So uh, yeah, everybody could have celebrated. Uh, and then he said it's, 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 it's always business. It's never personal. Mm-hmm. And then who was it? Was that G Money he had to end? Right. I think it was. Yeah. That's what I feel like. But if we're going to talk about the Cardinals' offense, then, I'm, then I feel a moral obligation to our audience to go through the Cardinals' offensive statistics. Not great. Or is that going to be inconvenient? No. But you just said they're getting offense. They're, okay. Well, let, me, let me rephrase that. They're getting. It's never personal. I it's always that. business. Cash money, brothers. Like I'm not, CMB. I'm not necessarily convinced by like. But Keith Sweat, you remember Keith Sweat? <laughs> not, not enough. People don't talk about Keith Sweat enough. We'll get to that in the third segment, yeah. right before Jr. I'm not necessarily saying like the power is jumping off, like they're not banging balls out right, to the wall because they have one home run. Right, and it happened, I think, in the first inning of the first game. Paul Goldschmidt, yeah, he he turned second inning one. of this or second at bat, I believe, not yeah. first inning. Paul Goldschmidt has the the one long ball. However, they're getting guys on base. They're getting opportunities to score some runs. Team yes. OBP of 233. <laughs> okay, like, I, I don't know. Okay. You did this yourself. No, fine. The card, the season's season over. Here. Season's over. Season's I, but, over. But there's a difference between season's over and saying things that aren't true. Don't you believe in honesty in media? What did I say that wasn't true? They almost they're, split. They're, their offense is going. But they they had some, <laughs> some moments. They had their moments. They had their moments. They're driving in two. What up? Gorman, strike out a lot though. Nolan Gorman's hitting 235. Yeah. Nolan Arenado's at 063. Yeah, he. That, that, there's no, no, no one even the holder Brandon is the right holder. 125. Yeah. Alec Burleson 214. Showing a little power from Burleson. Victor Scott 143. Getting Wilson on Contreras base. 100. Yeah, Jordan Walker 100. Matt Carpenter 200. Brendan Crawford in one game, 250. Von Herrera is hitting zero in one game. Uh, there is a player hitting over 300. That's Mason Wynn. Everybody's picked to click. <laughs> Wilson Contreras looks like he Paul has Goldschmidt it. is your one guy with a home run, and he's hitting 286. Yeah. Wilson Contreras looks like he has no interest in batting. He goes up there and stares at three pitches right down the middle and then Wilson walks Gutierrez back. Wilson Gutierrez doesn't have any interest in hitting. It doesn't look like it. He goes up there and like just has no interest. In... Herrera played really well on Saturday, by the way. But uh, but now and now it seems like anytime I say anything positive about the Cardinals, it's Randy no, Wright's no, over you're, you're doing the thing where if I disagree, then you go, well, that means a season. That's what I'm saying. But you're saying... You're saying two things that I feel like are factually inaccurate. Okay. I'll, so I, have a, I feel a moral obligation, as much as I love you, Wesley Snipes, G Money, 1991 Best Picture, New Jack City. It's business. It's never personal. No, I get that. I get that. I will concede on the offense thing. The offense okay. has not been great by any standards. However, they're, I mean, they were in a position to win last night, and they won on Saturday. So I don't think it was wrong for me to say they almost split. Now, yeah, I, I left out the part where they also could have got swept, but they didn't. They didn't. They won the game. Right, but they didn't almost split either. But yes, they did. They were, they were up in the eighth inning last night. Okay, and had to split but then if the you're going to say that, then you also have to acknowledge that they almost got swept because their one win came in extra inning. Yes, both are true. Okay. Both are true. But you only brought up the one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're not wrong. You're not wrong there. I will concede that point. Are you concerned about the strikeouts at yeah. all? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, like... like the, the, the club has 133 at-bats, 43 of which are strikeouts. Yeah, it's there's guys who look absolutely lost up there. Mainly, 23 hits, 43 strikeouts. Mainly number 28. He looks the most lost out of everybody up there. Yeah. What, one hit? How about this? You got support. I actually agree with Piddles. It's a weird day. I don't know what he's agreeing with you on because these things are not <laughs> true, but you have support. Yeah. Listen, I mean, I'm I'm not like super encouraged by the weekend by any means. However, oh, this was this a trick? My hiccups are gone. <laughs> was this a trick? That's so meta. No. Didn't even cross my mind. Well, if it took your mind off of him, it yeah. probably could lead to the end of it. So you know, this is a big Thank victory for me.
Uh, Jackson has been drinking too much of his snobby drinks with his pinky sticking out this week and noticed that the Cardinals are striking out on 40% of their outs. Is that what it was? Do you drink, like, little with your pinky out? I mean, sometimes I'll drink with my pinky out. It's not intentional. It's just sometimes what you do. <laughs> I've never been more disappointed in Piddles. He's a rights holder. No, so I just, like, like it, there's 162 of these things. Like, I think sometimes, and I'm not saying anybody in this room or right. anyone out there, right is, there. Is, is guilty of this. However, I feel like like one game, and it's like, oh, negative, pessimism, pessimism, pessimism. But that's not, that's not, that's not, that's not the issue. Okay. This is, this is, it, it, I mean, for real. If you were on a post-game program, mm -hmm. radio or television, it doesn't matter, and you were to welcome to the Piddles post-game program, yeah, yeah. you know, you're doing YouTube that's Piddles right. post-game program. Yeah, I'd have a little wireless <laughs> mic that's really small. <laughs> yeah, like Bob Barker doing Showcase Showdown. Yeah, and the Cardinals have just lost after having a four nothing lead, and you were to go, well, the Cardinals almost get a split in Los Angeles, but unfortunately they fall 5-4. We'll turn our attention to San Diego now as Kyle Gibson will make his season debut. Good effort from the Cardinals tonight. They almost, I might, I might have to come after you if you were to do that. I wouldn't do be, that. Because you'd be holding rights. No, because I have, there's, there are some things to question last night, legitimately question. Uh, I kind of get Putting Mats on an 80 pitch count, uh, he don't want to get him injured because then you're really struggling to find a fifth body to pitch baseball games. So I'm not super mad about that. I'm a little confused with the heart of the lineup coming up that you don't put Ryan Helsey out there. I get that he's not great after one inning. He's a one inning kind of guy. However, I don't know. Maybe try it. Palante, Gonzo, King, Gonzo. Didn't love that. Didn't love that. Didn't love that. Um, what color is Jackson's bow tie today? That's from Marsha's burner. All right. All right. I'll take the L. <laughs> That's all they wanted you to do. It's fine. It's That's fine. all they wanted you to I'll do. I'll tell you what, though. What do you got? On Saturday night when Ryan Helsley struck out Shohei Otani, I haven't yelled like that at a sporting event for a while. That was... that. Inject that right here. Same with Burleson. Really? Same you weren't with... like at Wheelhouse getting bottle service at that time? No. No, I was not. I was locked down. I'm doing the work. <laughs> if you're going to hold some rights, you better watch. <laughs> or not. I guess it would actually behoove you not to. Where were you, where were you, where were you watching that game? My domicile. Wow. Yeah. With your friend of the feather? Yeah, she was kind enough to let me watch a little bit of it there and not be like, oh, this is brutal. <laughs> I agree with Pale. They almost split. I expected them to be swept. There you go. They could get in support. Oh, listen, I, like it, Tim does make a good point. Like I, I say that they almost split, but you also have to mention that they almost got swept. And for whatever reason, the Dodgers catcher really gets a little ambitious and <laughs> two catcher interferences. That's a that's a problem if I'm Dave Roberts. But having said that, you take runs however you're going to get them. And when offense, like especially when Nolan Arenado cannot see the ball for whatever reason, you take offense wherever you can get it. And if it means getting on base, taking walks. Fine by me. Fine by me. I, I, I'm not disputing that they almost split. I'm just also saying that if you're going to say that, then you also have to acknowledge that they almost were swept. That's all I'm saying. 100% agree. That's all I'm That's saying. That's a very fair point. That's all I'm saying. And if the thing that, that, to me, the headline wouldn't be the offense, it would actually be the starting pitching. To me, that's where I would. Zach Thompson wasn't brilliant, but I don't think he was terrible. Nope. And Lance Lynn certainly danced with the devil, but he escaped. And Steven Matz, if anything, I think people are like, I wish he would have been in there longer. How many people would have said, thought they'd be saying that about Steven Matz in the sixth inning right. on his uh, first start of the year at Dodger Stadium? So, with all of that said, you could have made the case more with the starting pitching as opposed to going offense, because when you go offense, so then I, as the opposing counselor, just start reading statistics, and it's not very difficult. But, yeah, the, the starting pitching-wise, that was a pleasant surprise. Yes, certainly. Lance Lynn. The bullpen, unfortunately, went, you know. Yeah, yeah, I mean, no doubt. And Gasoline. that's a huge concern, but again, but it's also tied into you know, an 80 pitch count with a week with a bullpen that's pitched three straight days. It's going to be tough. That's exactly right. It's so, um, I had a fiduciary responsibility last night when the Cardinals were up four, nothing. And I saw the Dodgers plus three seventy five. I had a fiduciary responsibility to my family. Yeah. Well, listen, I don't blame you with the, yeah, with I don't the like to do it. I don't like to do it. Matter of fact, it cost us that parlay that we released on Thursday. Cause I like, well, the Dodgers are probably going to win this game, but I'll take the over.
So then that way I'm not cheering against the Cardinals. Yeah. So I had a fiduciary responsibility of plus 375. Yeah. Oh, I don't blame you for making the move. You but do it was it, but... based on, I don't know who these people are who are going to try and get nine outs against this lineup. That's the heart of the lineup's coming up. Maybe, just maybe you put Helsley in. I don't know. I don't know. I, I get that he's not great in the second frame when he has to go out there two times, but I feel like the lineup was a lot scarier in the eighth than it was going to be in the ninth. Uh, let's see. Um, an 80 pitch mountain. The Cardinals still didn't get another starter. An 80 pitched mountain. The Cardinals still didn't get another starter. I'm going to try it one more time and see if an 80 pitched mountain. The Cardinals still didn't get another starter. I guess using context clues, you're mm -hmm. throwing out a guy as your fifth starter who can only throw 80 pitches. Why would you not get another yeah. starter? But I don't he know didn't throw much in spring training, so I think that's yeah, well, probably the core reason, right? Less than 20 innings. Right. Uh, your thoughts are welcome. Uh, Air Comfort Service text line, 314-399-9646. And then, of course, you can leave mic drops. And Jeremy Rutherford's going to be with us at 1045. All that to come here on Balloon Party 101 ESPN. James Carlton of the Carlton State Farm Insurance Agency is my insurance agent, and I would love for him to become your insurance agent as well. It's James Carlton in Webster Groves, 314-961-4800, or go online at carltoninsurance.com. Net and work with James and his wonderful staff. You'll see three. Oh, what are we going to have here? 360. James, James is 363 now? Five star reviews when you Google them on carltoninsurance.net on Google. That is James Carlton. He's my insurance agent. I'd like for him to become your insurance agent as well. Once you make the switch, they do all the paperwork for you for home, for life, for auto. And in particular, if you have a child still on your insurance policy who's under the age of 25 but is driving, that's where James has found he's been able to save the most money. It's James Carlton of the Carlton State Farm Insurance Agency, carltoninsurance.net, or call 314-961-4800.
Welcome back. It's Balloon Party 101 ESPN. Tim McKernan, Jackson Burkett with you. Munganess, St. Louis Acura, Munganess, Burkhart, Alton, Toyota, presenting sponsor of the program. Uh, Jackson, we got a mic drop uh, you wanted to play? Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, you know me, Tim. I'm out here. I'm, I'm caping for the Redbirds, but uh, Steve is not. He's not pleased with what he's seen so far. Take a listen. I mean, the Dodgers are the best team in the league. What do you expect? Stop it! Why don't we just give the World Series trophy right now? Why are we even playing this season if they're so damn good? They got Hall of Fame players up and down the lineup. You know what we have? We have Hall of Fame fans. Bowtie, why don't you treat us as such? And what's Matt's doing? 80 pitches? He can't even make it through a season anyway. Leave him in the damn game. Give him a chance to win. That bullpen, we haven't even addressed that issue ever. So, Bowtie, get you on the phone. Get some pitchers here. We're one and three. The season's almost over. And, Pale, if you watch women's basketball instead of the Cardinals and Blues tonight, don't even bother showing up tomorrow. You're banned from St. Louis Sports Talk if you do that. Tired of it. Wow. You know, you do have the Blues in action tonight against the Oilers. Connor McDavid in town. You do have the Cardinals going up against a knuckler tonight in San Diego. Mike Schilt versus Ali Marmol. Yep. What are you going to be watching? Well, LSU and Iowa women's tip off at 6.15. So I think there's kind of a way where I can get all of it in. You can get all in. I can get all of it, at least parts of each game in. Um, early tip-off is actually helpful in this case. Yeah. So there's that. Um, but Let's I can say watch they were everything. all on at the same time. What would you watch? The Iowa, order? Iowa, LSU, much like most of the nation. I'll be tuned into that. But I, but I, I can keep tabs on the other games. Well, the Cardinal game. I'll find out in the morning what happened on the hockey rink. Tough one on Saturday night. Yeah, losing the Sharks ain't going to help anybody. Outscored by the Sharks 9-1 to so far this season. So odd because then they have like games against the Canucks and Bruins where they're like outstanding. And then they play crumb bums, almost lose like the Ducks, 1-0 of the Blue Jackets before the All-Star break. Those are the games that count, baby. Oh, look now. Brutal. You look it's now. Brutal. My dauber was really down about that. It is, and then the Kings wound up losing on Saturday night. Yeah, it was right wide open for the old Blue Jackets. So they'd be three points back. Can you imagine they're three points back going into tonight? That would be. That would certainly change, especially against a team like Edmonton. <sighs> what do you mean, especially against a team like Edmonton? Well, this would be a big. This would be a big showdown. Ah, I see. And also Edmonton, you kind of got to think their place is solidified in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. What's their real oh, you motivation? you think uh, they're going to take their foot off the gas? Is that what yeah. you're saying? You can you tell me there's value in the money line on the Blues tonight? Listen, if you were if if the shoe Jackson's was on the other given, foot, given a shark, I mean, you fixed the power play. Now you're going to tell me that the Blues are going to win tonight? I'm just saying, if you were like the if shoes on the other foot, the Blues are solidified in the playoff spot. They got a week or two left in the season. Would you want them putting out all their stars to play a somewhat meaningless game? I guess seeding is important, but. Well, I mean, I'm sure some people who are critical of your association would say in the NHL they don't take nights off. It's fun. It doesn't make it smart. It doesn't make it the right move. Uh, put 100 on the Blues. They win tonight. You win 170. Okay. You got to put 200 on the Oilers to win 100. I don't want to do that. All right. Because then I'd be rooting against the Blues and leveraged. Yeah. I'll, I'll just probably fade either way. Okay. I, I don't know enough about either club. Which is saying something. Jackson, which way are you going to go with the second question? ILL losing or the Blues? Blues. Going Blues. Going Blues. Blues is a tough, tough game to the Sharks, falling 4 nothing. what seems like could be the nail in the coffin for the 23-24 season. At this point, do you think it's curtain for the blue, curtains for the Blue Note, and what is there left to watch for? <sighs> Mathematically, the answer is No. <sighs> With the lack of games left, it's awfully tough to to see a route. Yeah. But if you do want to put 100 on the Blues to win the Stanley Cup, it'll pay you 15000 I kind of feel like it should be way higher than that, honestly. <laughs> yeah. But either way, that is uh, what the math was as of this morning. It's such a shame 
more than the playoff math of the way they played yeah. on Saturday night. Jeremy Rutherford, damning column in The Athletic, and he'll join us at 1045. That is inexplicable. The second period in particular was mind-blowing. It's like, okay, should have probably had a lead after the first period. Frustrated, fine. Still scoreless going into the second period. And then you have that kind of performance with the season on the line, especially with the way you'd played going into that game. Um, I'm I'm alarmed by it, honestly. And, and you know, the Nonling, uh, he, he t- texted me this. I've been pretty zen about the Blues post-cup, but Saturday was pretty exasperating. Just an entire group that went rudderless. Uh, that's my uh, compadre, former producer on TMA, Kevin Lorenz. And Jeremy Rutherford was about as damning as he's ever been in a, in a column. I mean, he was tweeting out, worst Blues loss since, I don't know. I mean, there have probably been games where they maybe played worse, I guess. But considering what they had done to get to that point and then to have that kind of performance against that team, that's the key thing, against that team. Like, if that were to happen tonight, mm-hmm. like if you beat the Sharks and then you lose 4 nothing to the Oilers, or if it would have happened against Colorado the previous week, you kind of go, okay, well, that's the Oilers, that's Colorado. Those two teams could wind up winning the Stanley Cup. But this, that was that was absolutely mind-blowing. Uh, Jeremy Rutherford wrote, it wasn't just a loss. It was a game that should be a wake-up call to Tom Stillman and Doug Armstrong. Not only the Blues not sneaking into the playoffs, they could have pulled it within three points of a playoff spot with the Kings' loss. This franchise will not take another step forward toward future success unless there's more awareness from the top down of how they got here and where they're going now. This is a situation of, quote, well, we're in a retool that we knew would take some time. We've got some good young prospects on the way and we're okay being a little patient because for the most part the fans understand and quote perhaps some of that is true but substantial changes are not only needed they are required this is not an overreaction to a second loss this season to san jose although who could blame anyone for thinking that uh so jeremy rather would say changes are required we'll talk it over with him in about 15 minutes we'll talk tournament on the other side of the break you are listening to balloon party on 101 espn Ah, uh, this is Tim McKernan for the Bath Authority. If your bath or shower is old, outdated, has mold, mildew, or broken tiles, you got to call my friends at the Bath Authority. The Bath Authority provides the highest quality bathroom remodeling products along with a world-class customer experience. Their modern, durable tubs and showers are designed with an exclusive high-tech polymer liner. And what that means to you is it'll be low-maintenance, resistant to mold and mildew, easy to clean, and last for decades. Plus, it comes with a lifetime warranty. Walk-in tubs, replacement showers, tub-to-shower conversions, and more ever units custom built you pick the premium accents and accessories including safety features like low profile showers grab bars and shower seats all bath authority products are 100 percent made in the usa and they can be installed in as little as one day by certified factory technicians call today 314-347-0410 and get a thousand dollars off a new shower bath plus 36 months of interest-free financing you are their priority at the bath authority elevate your bathroom to a new level of luxury style and safety call today 314 314- Four seven zero four one zero to schedule your free NOM estimate today and get a thousand dollars off a new shower bath plus thirty six months of interest free financing. The bathauthority.com. A better bath awaits.
This is Action Jackson with a Sports Center update driven by Johnny Landoff Chevrolet and Johnny Landoff Autoplex. The Blues lose on Saturday 4 0 to the San Jose Sharks. The Blues are back in action tonight, taking on the Edmonton Oilers here in St. Louis. You can catch that game on the home of the Blues, 101 ESPN. Pre-game starts at 7 p.m. Puck drop at 8 p.m. And the Cardinals get a big victory on Saturday and come from behind fashion, winning 6-5 over the Dodgers. And last night in the NBA, the Nuggets defeat the Cavaliers 130-101. Nikola Jokic, six. 26 points, 18 rebounds, and 16 assists. That was another Sports Center update driven by Johnny Landoff. Find new roads and shop 24 7 at Landoff.com and LandoffAutoplex.com. Are you kidding me? Welcome back. It is Balloon Party 101 ESPN. Jeremy Rutherford will join us at 1045. Jackson will tell us how the Blues actually uh, won on Saturday night against the, the Sharks. Holding rights. <laughs> Encouraging, encouraging performances. That's what you're basing this. I like it, though. I like it. I need your positivity. It lifts my spirits. Yeah. Listen, I'm, I'm far from gung-ho on this Cardinal team right now. However, I just, you know. All right. I'm just, I'm just going to monitor where you're... Uh, where you pop up. That's what I'm saying. I think you I think you might be angling for something. I, I, tell you, I can tell you I, I am not. Uh, Jackson, uh, it's uh, the Little Piddles Monday Moaning. Yeah. What do we got here? What's the next question on Monday Moaning? Probably some moaning going on in Champaign, Illinois, Tim. Yeah. You know, IOL uh, started out looking to be a worthy opponent of the Mighty Huskies from Connecticut in the first half. After, However, after a 2023 23-23 deadlock. UConn went on a 30-0 run that is stretching across both halves. Is this a case of Illinois kind of fumbling an opportunity, or is UConn just that dominant? How do you think Illini faithful are taking this loss? I don't like uh, when people go both to questions where it's an either-or, but that, that's it. It, it. Here's the thing. I think the way that that went down is probably more painless or less painful. They both mean the same thing. Right. Uh, than if... Um, it would have been something similar to the way Tennessee lost to Purdue, for example. Right. Um, I mean, to go extreme, Missouri lost to UCLA, Tyus Sedney, if it were something like that. Oh, 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 because once about three minutes into the second half had expired, it was clear you're at 23 points. UConn was at 23 points with you, and now they're like at 37. Yeah. That it's going to be very difficult to come back. Um, I went to both Missouri SEC championship games in Atlanta, and I can assure you I am still bothered by the loss to Auburn way more than I was by the blowout loss to Alabama the former, mm -hmm. or the following year, excuse me. Right. Um, furthermore, that happened to be against a team that might be underappreciated for how good they are, actually, yep. in UConn. It didn't happen against... I don't know, NC State's on a heater right now. But maybe like an Alabama four seed that didn't necessarily seem dominating. And if that would happen against Alabama, this is against UConn. And UConn is an 11.5-point favorite in their matchup in Alabama in the, in the Final Four. Uh, for the record, Purdue is a 9.5-point favorite against NC State. So I think I would guess Illinois fans were able to go, okay, we were able to move on during the game yeah. as opposed to holding out hope for this upset and then losing at the buzzer totally. doing something dumb at the end of the game that, that cost you yeah like i said i barely remember the missouri alabama game i know amari cooper was on that team and then if you look at that roster derrick henry was on that team and yeah. you go how in the hell were they even on the same field with those guys they shane lost ray to indiana you, yeah shane ray had a kicked out like in the first right quarter so you know, but the one against Auburn and Trey Mason still yeah. bothers me. Totally. Understand that was there and that, that, that felt like self-inflicted in a way. So with that all established, I would imagine Illinois fans are like, yeah, lost to the most likely the best team. And they're clearly the best team. And we had a great year and we're at peace with that. That's what I would imagine. Most Illinois fans. But I was fired up when it was 23-23. I'm like, sure. here we go. We yeah. got ourselves a game. Absolutely. I believe that is the 10th straight double-digit win for UConn in the tournament. Stretching from last season. Wow. Ten, can you imagine 10 straight games and double digits in the NCAA tournament? I just, I, the, 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 you know, it was Florida when they won back to back. That's the last back to back champion, correct? correct? Yep. 2006, 2007. Yep. Joe Kim Noah. Yep. Al Horford. Yep. Corey Brewer. Corey Brewer. I don't feel like, now you were nine. I was pretty into it, though. Uh, I don't feel like they were viewed as a 
dominant team. They were a great team. I want to make this clear, but this is domination. But what I'm trying to get to is this. I didn't necessarily feel like there were teams that that are doing what UConn is doing over the last 30 years. The one that I go back to, and maybe there's one I'm missing, an obvious one, but again, obviously we haven't had a back-to-back -back mm -hmm. champion, are like the UNLV teams, which predate you, but they would, I mean, they would teams. pound teams, yeah. pound teams. Yeah. Even the Duke team that beat Kentucky, they had to have that miracle play to win. Mm -hmm. Um the Fab Five, well known, but they never won a national championship. Yeah. So I just this is this what they're doing is kind of like the those like 1990s college football teams that would win by 50 points. And for some reason, I don't know if maybe it's the the relative to where college football has grown and college basketball has either stayed in the same place or, or decreased with the way that men's college basketball anyway, because I think there's a lot of excitement nationally for Caitlin Clark and LSU tonight, that I feel like UConn might be underappreciated for how dominant they are. Couldn't that's what more. I'm that's what I'm trying to get to. I agree totally because basketball is a game where like it is hard to be that dominant for that long of a stretch. There are games where you have off shooting nights. It happens to every team ever has had an off shooting night or, you know, rebounds aren't going their way. They're not getting calls. There's a million different things that can go wrong in variables to have this level of dominance for this sustained period of time and being on the doorstep of back to back dominant championship runs is completely unprecedented. It just doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. You have off nights and they don't have off nights. Who was the two seed in the tournament? Like UConn was the one overall. I think was Purdue. It, was it Purdue? Or it was either it Purdue or Houston. But Houston got smoked against Iowa State. So what, have. you know, I mean, again, this is the point spread saying it, but 11 and a half point spread for UConn over Alabama, nine and a half point spread for Purdue over NC State. You could have, even after getting an 11 seed in the final four, um, I, I suppose Oakland was the biggest upset, right? 14 yeah. over a three in yeah. Kentucky, even though Kentucky certainly a wide Delta team. That when it's all said and done, you could have the top two teams yep. with, I mean, a matchup that I think a lot of people would love to see and would certainly be more apt to tune into as opposed to, I think, Alabama, NC State. Totally. Or UConn against NC State. Yeah. You know, if NC State were not from the ACC and they were an 11 seed from an offshoot yeah. conference, yeah. then it feels more like a, a Cinderella, even though NC State hasn't won anything since Jim Valvano in 83. You haven't been in fi Final Four since then. But they're still an ACC team. Yeah. And I don't think it carries the cachet of, say, even like when Butler. Exactly. That was the team I was just about to you reference. You know, and, and when Gordon Hayward in 2010. Mm -hmm. So... I want to see UConn go up against Purdue and Zach Eady. I, yes. I want to see that take place. Yes. Uh, I think they're, uh, if we're taking the other two teams, the NC State is the team you'd rather, the 11 seed, they have a big name in DJ Burns, who people yeah. seem to love. You don't want to see Nate Oates. No. I don't. No. Uh-oh. No. No, I do not want to see Nate Oates. Uh, congratulations to him, but I don't think they're going to fare too well against the Connecticut Huskies. I tend to agree with you. 11 and a half point dogs. Purdue and NC State is a really fun matchup, uh, but I think, yeah, if you get Purdue versus UConn where you get ED versus Klingon, that's like, that's what you want. Right I mean, there. I'm telling you, I, I would want. go out of my way to be fired up to watch that next Monday night. Oh, yeah. All right, Jimmy Rutherford's going to join us. Uh, Blues and Oilers tonight, five points back, but the story is what took place on Saturday against the Sharks. JR with a scathing column on The Athletic. Plus, what's going to happen with Jimmy Snipes? Jimmy Snuggerud. We'll talk it over with JR next. This is Balloon Party on 101 ESPN. Munganass St. Louis Acura, Munganass Burkhard, Alton Toyota, presenting sponsor of Balloon Party on 101 ESPN and the 101 ESPN YouTube channel. It's the place I go to get my cars, the place my family goes to get our cars. Lots of listeners going there as well. You can go shopping right now at stlouisacura.com and at altontoyota.com and work with the best. The best is Jamie Burkhard, Clayton Patterson, Peter Munganast, and Ryan Cyber. That is in the service department. They will take wonderful care of you. Go online to go shopping at stlouisacura.com or altontoyota.com. 
Com. And there is a number specific for our listeners to call or to text. That number is 314-252-0029, 314-252-0029, to work with Jamie Burkhardt, Clayton Patterson, Peter Munganast, and then in the service department, Ryan Seiberg. Munganast, St. Louis Acura, Munganast, Burkhardt, Alton Toyota. Welcome back. This is Balloon Party, driven by Munganass, St. Louis Acura, Munganass, Burkhardt, Alton, Toyota, and it is our pleasure to welcome to the program, ladies and gentlemen, the great Jeremy Rutherford. Morning, JR. What's up, Tim? How you doing? Good. I had the hiccups earlier, and I'm battling yeah, through it, and I think I'm inspiring people. I was looking forward to breaking it down with Jackson and finding out uh, what he's learned about this team. Jackson, what have you learned about this team? Uh, oh, boy. So much to list. You know, we only have to 11, JR. Uh, the resiliency, uh, the net minding, the forecheck. You know, there's a lot to be hopeful for in 2024, 2025. The, the forecheck. Yeah. Yeah. That's where you hit people going forward, though, as opposed to the back of, check. A lot of one word answers there. I'll see if I can do a little better here uh, the next few minutes. Yeah. But yeah, Jess, yeah. I mean, it's going to be tough to duplicate that, but I, see if you can. I subscribe to less is more, JR. <laughs> well, I like the Cardinals. Uh, yeah. <laughs> JR, I was, I, I can tell you, I was, I was alarmed. I, and I'm, I'm glad that your column and uh, your tweets echoed my. I was frustrated because it made it even worse once the Kings lost, but taking that out of the equation to lose to that team for nothing, considering the circumstances, just alarming. 
just incredible. And there have been a lot of times this season, Tim, where I didn't write after games because it's just one game. I mean, even when they had the five-game winning streak, you know, let's say that you start playing on the parade after the fourth or fifth win. You know, we saw after that what type of team this is. So there wasn't, even at the time, to get all excited about a five-game winning streak. So I haven't focused on any singular games this year, but that's definitely one that you focus on, and, and not just this year. Like, I realize there's been some bad games this year, that one nothing to Columbus, the 5-1 to uh, San Jose. There's a few others. But in terms of the circumstances, in terms of this team says it's fighting for a playoff spot, in terms of you have a chance potentially, which ended up happening, L.A. lost. You could have pulled within three points of a playoff spot. All that on the line, and you want to lose 4 nothing to the team that's trying to get the number one overall pick in the draft. Just incredible. And and so I look at that loss. To me, it's the biggest loss in, in years, not just this season. Wow. What was the uh, vibe? I mean, I saw your, your quotes in your column and listened to the postgame sound. But the, the, the vibe uh, following that, whether it be from players, coaches, front office, that uh, that's what I want to get some, some behind-the-scenes color, if you will. Yeah, the first time they put you in the locker room right after the game. And I've got all the respect in the world for Braden Chen. Even though this season hasn't gone well and some people want to question his leadership, I think he's a good person. I think he's a good leader. I asked him a couple questions like, how can this happen? Braden, how can this happen? And he said, I don't know, and I don't know what to tell you. And then I said, is this more telling than one game, one loss? Is this telling of, uh, of broader issues with the team? And he said, I don't know what to say. I can't tell you. So to me, I get it. It's post game. You're not expected to get, you know, some sort of Barbara Walters interview question and answer there. But, but I'm, but I'm just saying like to come up with nothing. And again, all the respect in the world, it's just tough. And so I think it's a situation where, you know, they realize what's going on here with this team. The players do, and they don't have any of the answers. And then in terms of, you know, take a step back outside the locker room, you know, I I haven't spoken to, let's say Tom Stillman, Doug Armstrong, but the vibe here is, you know, they feel like this thing's going to be over. I feel like, and being around the team in a week or so, and these guys are going to have tons of questions to answer at that point, And they better have some answers at that point. How did, how does overall, I mean, it wasn't just Saturday night. You made reference to it. They've played the sharks twice so far. They got one more with them. The sharks are a historically bad team. Uh, and they've been outscored to them by nine, one, they have other losses, which Shen himself mentioned. Uh, and I'm not saying he was calling out teams. He's just kind of stating the obvious. These losses to the Blackhawks, the Blue Jackets, the Sharks, these have really hurt this team. And, and there was the kind of stagnant first period against the Ducks uh, a couple Sundays ago. They have some kind of issue with these teams. Meanwhile, they'll go toe-to-toe with the Avalanche. They'll go toe-to-toe with the Canucks. We saw Boston three weeks ago. That's that's That almost makes it more confusing that they will play down to the opposition and play up to great teams. Tim, here's the, here's the stat. 0-4 against San Jose and Columbus here. 0-4. But not that. They've been outscored 19-3 to in those four games wow. against those four teams. Now, listen, if they go 0-4 against San Jose and Columbus and you get outscored 12-8, to whatever, 13-7, so be it. We're talking about 19-3 to against two of the worst teams in hockey this year. And to me, you can talk all you want about beating the top teams in the league. We've seen them play these guys, like you said, toe-to-toe. To me, that that trend of the way they play against uh, the bottom teams and then beat the top teams, that, that's just so disturbing. And that's something that, from management on down, they need to get to the bottom of. I, I don't, I don't think you can pat this team on the back anymore for coming up with some of these big victories like the Boston win. If this is what we're going to see against bottom of the barrel teams, uh, so the math is that theoretically, with LA's loss, they're they're still alive. Did you get the sense that they were holding on to that on Saturday, or do you feel like that closed the book? Yeah, again, tough because, like, the other guy we talked to in the locker room besides Braden Chen was Colton Preco. Right. And, you know, Colton, you know, I mean, you could you could punch him in the face and he'd tell you you're a nice guy. Like, it's tough. So, like, his, uh, his, his comments after the game were, we're going to regroup and be ready for Monday. So, super positive. You know, we're going to stay in this thing. We're still in it. So, you still kind of get the vibe that, that they feel like they can do this, but obviously a tough Edmonton team tonight. Uh, L.A., by the way, who you're chasing down five on L.A., uh, has Winnipeg tonight. So, you know, if you come out fired up and, and somehow pull out 
a win against this Edmonton team, Edmonton team, and and uh, LA uh, goes up against a, a Winnipeg team that's headed to the playoffs. You know, perhaps you pull within three, but now you're getting down to seven games left in the season, and the Kings have one game in hand on you. So it's still going to be tough, even if things fall your way tonight. Uh, all right. The other topic that Blues fans certainly want to hear about is Jimmy Snuggerud and what will be taking place with him. Uh, what can you tell us on the latest with Jimmy Snipes? Yeah, I wrote about it uh, today, kind of laying it, laying it out there. And the situation is this. Uh, Jimmy Snuggerud, he could be a Blue in the next uh, 24 hours. Could happen today, tomorrow. He's making a decision whether to uh, turn pro or whether to return to the University of Minnesota. If I had to handicap it, you know, I, I think I think that he's going to turn pro and, and join the Blues. Uh, there's always the option, as we've talked about the past couple months, of not signing with the Blues, going to Springfield, and playing with the American Hockey League team on a tryout contract and then coming to St. Louis next year. But I just don't think that's the way this is going to go. Listen, we've made a big deal, and I've made a big deal, about the fact that you burn a full year if you uh, join the Blues and play these last seven or eight games. That's one year of your three-year entry-level contract. But I, I think that you can also point out the fact that all that does is cut off one year of the contract. You would still have to, he would still have to, produce tremendously in the next two years to push for a, a much bigger contract in year three. So I think if the Blues were uh, looking at it like, hey, if he produces, we'll be willing to pay him in two years, uh, I think that it would be you know good for both sides. So we'll see what happens with Snuggerud. I would expect him to you know, turn pro and join this team probably in the next couple of days and perhaps make his debut Thursday against the Nashville Predators. Nothing set in stone yet but it looks like it could go that way. There it is. Jeremy Rutherford, major recommended reading on The Athletic from JR, both on uh, Snuggerud and also on what took place Saturday night against the San Jose Sharks. Can they turn it around and make a miracle run? Well, we'll find out, Jackson. Blues Oilers tonight, pregame 7 p.m. here on 101 ESPN. We will see how they respond to the debacle from Saturday night against San Jose. JR, always appreciate the time. Thanks so much for the perspective. Fine, sir. Thanks, Tim. Talk to you later. Thanks, JR. There he is. That's Jeremy Rutherford with us. Hey, don't forget, 101 ESPN broadcasting live from the Budweiser Brew House inside Ballpark Village this Thursday for opening day. The home opener finally here. And 101 ESPN will be set up just steps away from Bush Stadium. The opening drive, BK and Ferrario, the fast lane, all coming to you live this Thursday from Ballpark Village. Our opening day broadcast brought to you by Swiss Air Heating and Cooling, Holiday World and Splashing Safari, and Budweiser. Time for us to shut it down. BK and Ferrario are coming up next for Jackson Burkett. I'm Tim Kernan. This has been Balloon Party, driven by Munganess, St. Louis Sacker, and Munganess Burger at Alton Toyota on 101 ESPN.